In this video, you and I are going to fault find and then fix a problem with this alternator. Before we start, there's one very important thing that we've got to do. Can you guess what that is? Exactly, put some white paper on top of your work surface. And don't ever trust anybody who does a job like this without white paper. This alternator was removed from the car once I was sure that there were no other issues on the vehicle itself. So I've checked the wiring, I've done voltage drop checks, and I've also checked the belt tension, all the simple things that could have been wrong with the vehicle. So let's start with the really simple things first before we start getting in too deep and breaking things down. Let's just check this particular alternator, like many others, has a slip clutch. So the first thing to do is just hold the rotor still, stick a screwdriver in, into the case, and then in one direction you should be able to turn that nice and smoothly. And in the other direction it should be rock solid, so do your best to try and turn it. Okay, that is rock solid, so I'm satisfied that that clutch isn't slipping. That could have been another cause to the, uh, the non-charging issue that I had. And on this particular alternator, you will see it's got this strange attachment to it. It's an oil-driven vacuum pump for the brake servo. Most alternators don't have these, and that makes it a lot easier to get the alternator on and off the car. Before we start disassembling the alternator, there's a simple test we can do. We should have done this on the car, but let's pretend that we haven't done that. So we're going to put the multimeter, there we are, onto the continuity check and then we want to go from the battery positive terminal and then go onto and scratch and dig into the case so that will be grounded and there we have one that hasn't changed that's what we're expecting on a good alternator and then if we switch these around do the same again there we are I don't know if you can see that so it should be between about 500 and 800 that's around 470 so that should be fine we're testing the diodes there, so it doesn't appear as though we've got any diodes that have gone from this test. I've hooked up a battery from a drill here, so I'm now supplying 11 volts to the alternator, and this is a full field test. I'm checking to see if it generates with some voltage applied there, and it doesn't. So we are now going to have to move on to the disassembly and see if we can find a problem in there. Before we start to disassemble this, we want to make sure it goes back in the same orientation. So just to mark that out. I know that looks awful, doesn't it? But it's quick and no amount of cleaning can remove those marks. So I know it's going to go back the same way it came off. These bolts are eight millimeters. giving these a, a gentle tap with a hammer just to get them started and then afterwards I can wedge it apart with a flat blade screwdriver. There we go, that's it started. Okay, the rotor came out with a little bit of gentle persuasion. I got a flat blade and I was uh, just hammering it against here because I thought that somebody was going to say, don't hit the lugs, you're going to crack the lugs. But then I wasn't recording anyway. The bearing is in really good condition. The slip rings are in excellent condition. Uh, much better than I imagined, actually. And I've measured the resistance of the armature winding on this rotor. And it's about 3 ohms, which is good. And there's nothing immediately wrong with this part of the alternator. So I'm now having to dismantle, because I've also looked into the stator here, and the brushes are in good condition, nice and long. And there is no evidence of overheating here, really. You know, there's nothing completely obvious. So I'm afraid I'm just going to have to keep dismantling, take off the oily parts as well, and get at the electronics so that I can test things properly. No doubt you know this already, but just in case somebody doesn't, this fastener here is ridiculously tight. I've been trying to undo it there with the flat blade, and it's just not working. So a little trick. Just get that nice and centered. Lump hammer. Give it a good whack and then try again. There she goes. Got these three fasteners out now. Sure they are the same length, yep. 
Okay, and now I'm going to disassemble my little oil pump or vacuum pump, oil driven vacuum pump. Third time lucky. And now I can access some more fasteners and get this little bad boy apart. The nuts on the back of this are 8mm on this Bosch alternator. And I'll just undo these and try and get some more access. Nuts have got little captive washers with them. And it looks as though this is going to have to come off as well, the stud. Gentlemen, and potentially a few ladies I suppose as well. Sorry, don't mean to be sexist. I think I may have found a problem. I'm in the process of removing the stator armature from the aluminium housing. And before I go any further, I just wanted to show you the, uh, the problem. If I wobble this around, this is going to one of the windings and that should be connected here electrically and mechanically and it's not so i believe this is our problem i'm about to split the stator here the stator armature from the aluminium housing and actually everything's going to come out together the electronics all come out together um, and the studs as well come through the body and all out as one assembly um, I just wanted to show you, it didn't look as though this, this was going to be easy to split, but then I've just found now, sneakily hidden there, there's a small gap. And you can get a screwdriver into there, that should help me to start prising this apart. There she comes. There we are, so it all comes out in one go. Now we can get a good look at what's wrong with this. Here we see what this, uh, this assembly should look like. The windings from the stator are soldered here. And then these in turn are soldered to the uh, rectifier and control assembly there. So if I wobble that around, you can see that this all moves together. However, if we come over this side, this should be the same, uh, but hopefully you can see this. It's not. So we have some solder broken there. So of course there's no electrical connection or mechanical connection here. And the same has happened under here. This should be soldered onto the base plate below it or above it as we're looking at it now. But it's not. I'm now going to snip the attachment here and here. I'll come back to you in a minute, I need two hands. There we go, that's this one done. So I'll do the second one now and then that will release this. Okay, I've got these all snipped now, I'm just going to withdraw. There we are. Now we've got this separated we get a really good view of the rectifier and regulator assembly and this is most definitely our problem as that's started to work loose it will have started to arc and overheated hence the melted plastic that we can see just here so this is kaput there we are then we found our fault now the good news is i've been online and you can buy these separately so you can buy just the diode plate here and that costs around $25 or you can buy this entire assembly and that's about $50 so you may be able to spend $25 to fix your alternator instead of $350 to buy a new one if you wanted to replace this entire component it's really easy you just place it back into position like so and then you crimp over the tabs then you get some high temperature solder aka silver solder one two three four dabs there you go that's ready to go back together and then once you've completed a successful bench test and you know it's working again, you can fit it to your car, you've got your car back. I'll leave some links in the description of the video to the parts that I mentioned. This is a Bosch alternator, but by looking at these parts you can get an idea of the kind of parts that you might need for yours. And no doubt they'll sell them for your alternator too. Thanks for joining me guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope something useful came of it. 
I'm sure something useful will come from the comments below. We've got a good community going here, guys, and you always come up with some great comments. So I'm looking forward to reading them when you make them. That's it. Until next time, don't forget, love life. Wow.